In today's video, we're going to be looking at my most recent purchase. This is, yes, yet another Mac Mini. This one being a 2006 variant with an Intel Core Duo processor. And how much did I get it for? Well, the incredible price of £30. Yes, £30, and keep in mind it comes with all the accessories, all the documentation, the power supply, the DVI to VGA adapter in fact, and I've got to say I'm in awe at what a killer deal this was. So yes, while I have only just reviewed my Mac Mini G4, I'm sure I don't have to explain to you guys how much better Intel is over PowerPC. So why don't we just go straight into this machine and see what it's running and get an idea of the machine. Let's get into it. So yes, this Mac is running 10.6 Snow Leopard. This is actually in its current state the max that this Mac can support, but with an upgrade notably to a Core 2 Duo T7200, this Mac can actually support 10.7 Lion, officially. Unofficially, there are workarounds to get as maximum as 10.10 .10 Yosemite on this machine. Now, Yosemite is quite buggy, so we're not going to be going with that. Um, graphics drivers notably don't really work very well, but we're going to be putting 10.9 Mavericks onto this machine. And that will actually help us to get some modern usage out of the machine, so it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. So as I said, we're going to need a new CPU for this. What am I going to be using? Well, as I mentioned, the T7200. This is a £1.37 part. These things are dirt cheap these days, and this being the T7200, this is actually one of the lower end Intel Core 2 Duo chips you can actually put in this machine. And that's because this has a stock clock speed of 2 GHz. You can get models that go all the way up to 2.3 gigahertz and so on and so forth and well you don't really need anything more than 2 gigahertz on a machine like this so it's not really worth the money especially considering the T7600 goes for 20 pounds 20 pounds for a core 2 duo I don't think so we're sticking with this T7200 so yes we're going to have to get out the good old putty knife and open another Mac mini and actually a notable upgrade I should mention that the previous owner did do to this machine was upgrade from the stock 512 megabyte sticks to 2 gigabytes of RAM so we don't really have to worry about RAM obviously I would like 4 gigabytes in the future but 2 is going to be fine for now also although I don't have it here right now an SSD is going to make a world of difference for this machine and that's what I'm planning to add into it. So, let's power the machine down, and now we have the fun experience of taking the machine apart. So, here we are. These are all the parts we're gonna be throwing into this machine. Obviously, first of all, we've got our wonderful T7200. Um, block out the light there. There you go, you can see the beauty of this Core 2 Duro chip. Um, obviously it is a socketed chip, or that's not socketed is it? Uh, it's got pins on it, yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and here we are, we've got this, the Kingston, I believe it's the K400, it doesn't actually say, uh, one of the lowest end Kingston drives you can really get. Um, I bought this a while back and it's a 128 gig and it's going to go perfectly inside of this machine so I'm quite happy with that and it's going to be a big upgrade over what it has from stock which is an 80 gigabyte hard drive. So not only are we getting the size advantages we're also getting speed from the SSD and it's going to be perfect I love it I'm so happy um, I'm really happy with this Intel Mac. Um, so why don't we just get straight into opening it up. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> A 
and here we go. Now we just need to slide that off and well this all looks pretty familiar doesn't it? Uh, except this time we've got airport and bluetooth um, in this model but yeah overall the the intel mac mini and the g4 mac mini use pretty much the same internal design um yes although the the fan assembly does look slightly different fun right ah <sighs> so to begin with we need to take this or push or you know put that out of the way for a moment um, next up oh, we've got a few screws to get to hold on there's a screw loose in here ha huh. whoever took this machine apart before must have been lazy oh well I guess we can worry about that when we actually get to taking all this machine apart yes so um, definitely gonna have to look up an iFixit guide I probably should have done that in the first place I just thought this was gonna be sort of the same as the G4 okay now here's the moment of truth with all the screws undone oh there we go not not as smooth as the G4 but oh, we're finally here um, so I did notice this board is already pretty loose um, well just in that corner I guess um, take a look at why this screw isn't coming out oh crap had things flying at me oh no I think I dropped a screw okay so now we've got all the or oh, just I'll disconnect this got this part to do now so as you can see we've got our two gigabytes of upgraded RAM here um, now what I say is by the fun job is we have to try and these tabs in without breaking them because if we break them we're a bit stuffed <laughs> found the other screw right um I'm hoping oh no Need to have to go and hunt one down until I go get uh, the, the proper star bolt screwdriver type thing. I'll put that off to the side and we'll deal with the hard drive. So what I have noticed actually is they've um, put these pads on here. They weren't on the last one and they've made it easier to get to the hard drive screws. Well done. Look, they're actually on the outside. You don't have to go in from this side. Um, I like that. Thank you, Apple. Even though this was from 14 years ago. Um, oh, that's already pretty loose. Oh, these are all pretty loose. Hmm. They're like finger tight. Okay, so yes, this is the original. If I just show you. Original 80 gigabyte uh, Apple branded drive uh, from Fujitsu. Um, so this new 80 gigabyte is definitely going to make the world a difference. Don't remember whether I just said 80 or 120 gigabyte. Anyway, 120 gigabyte SSD. Okay, there we go. Um, I will try and remove this. Um, as best I can. Um, oh my god, I just realised I don't even need this, do I? Or do I? Is it? No. Um, oh well, I'm sticking it on. Because <laughs> I'm guessing this is just an anti-vibration pad. I didn't really 
think that through um because for those of you who don't realize um ssds do not create vibration <laughs> okay we've done the simple job uh, um obviously i'm gonna have to go get that hex i'll show you what i'm talking about it's like a hex bolt to unscrew there um and then that should allow us to take this motherboard out hopefully yeah right i'll have to go get that so yeah Ooh, i'll be back we're back with the screwdrivers right there we go oh i can do it by hand as well that's the only bolt i believe we have to take off they just say you need to gently get a spudger in there because it's all stuck down so Aha. Okay. And it just slides out. Cool. Oh, whoops, the power button. I almost forgot. You have to be really, really careful when doing this process, so uh, I'm hoping it goes all well. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can see why people absolutely hate this experience, um, but we're there. Okay. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh, jeez. So we simply oh, unlock the CPU that's been in here for many years, 14 years. Here we go. This is the if I can turn it around properly, this is the T2400 uh, Intel Core Duo. So still a dual core processor, but not the Core 2 Duo, um, which obviously supports a lot more of the operating systems and different software. Um, and now we put in the wonderful, 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 wonderful T7200. Okay, there we go. That's cool. That, that's cool. Right. Uh, it's in. The, G, the, the GPU, is, the CPU, is in. So, we're at the end of this. Um, as I'm sure you guys will hopefully be able to see by the blown up, um, we'll zoomed in screen here. We've got the two gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo now showing up. It's fully working, it's all back together. I have installed Snow Leopard back onto the SSD, which is obviously working fine now. And well, th this is where we leave it for part one. Yes, I'm sorry to divide this into parts, but I don't want to release like an hour long video about upgrading a Mac Mini. So I feel like upgrading or splitting it into parts is the best option to do. So I'm hoping this video was at least helpful for those of you who wanted to know how to upgrade the Core Duo in the 2006 Mac Mini. Uh, maybe it was an instructional video for you guys, maybe you just want to watch it for the hell of it because it's TechWen content. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come back for part two where we'll be not only installing unsupported Mac OS, uh, we'll be upgrading the firmware and probably giving this system a clean. It definitely needs it. Um, we're going to give it a nice touch up. So that's where we leave it for part one and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's going to be a jam packed episode next. Goodbye, I hope you enjoyed it.